Hello, welcome into a special edition of the Football After Show brought to you by St. Xavier University alongside Bears legend, future Hall of Famer, our guy Olin Krutz and our NBC Sports Chicago Bears insider Adam Hogue. I'm David Kaplan. Big day at Hallis Hall. They get the new GM introduced. They get the new head coach introduced. We got some coach speak. Mm -hmm. What was your takeaway from what you heard? They're excited. They're excited about the guys that they hired. Um, you know, Pose talked about they have to fix their biggest weakness and they have to be relentless about it, and that's their offense. So we'll see. And he said put players in position to succeed, and that's going to be putting – Justin Fields in position to succeed, and you know their officer order gets he has the biggest job. So, Cap, my first takeaway was I feel like I've been here before, which I have. Same room, same place, same spiel. Got to fix the offense. We've heard this all before, so it's just it, you know not to like cop out of the day, but it's just it really just feels like we got to see what these guys can really do. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of first impressions, I like that it seemed like Ryan Poles had. An answer for everything. I, like, I could see why he won his interviews with the, not only the Bears, but also he impressed the Giants, he impressed the Vikings. He seemed to have a genuine, authentic plan for whatever was thrown his way. Uh, Matt Eberflus definitely came off like a football coach, mm -hmm. like in, a, in every sense of the word. And, and that's Bring your okay. track shoes. That's okay as long as you <laughs> get the buy in. So that's right. what I would ask you. I mean, yeah. do you think that buy in can happen with players right. these days? Well, with football, NFL football players, we talk about a lot. How do you become a leader of men? They talk about a leader of men leading a whole building. Really, of coaches, of anybody, is like in any business, can you make people better? Do you make the players better? Do you help them succeed where they want to succeed? Do you help them get their second contract? Do you help them play good football? Uh, that's what he's going to have to do because I was here in Lovey's first year in 2004, and he pushed for a lot of hustle. Everybody run to the ball, and some veterans, they didn't like that. They didn't like I remember one time Reuben Brown, they had him on film. He was running in place because Lovey said run to the ball every time, <laughs> and Reuben's running in the same spot. <laughs> so anyway, there, there's going to be some pushback, and especially if you ask, he said, bring his track shoes, and we're going to hustle. And he's going to have to teach them this new way that he wants. But eventually, it's just going to be, do you make the guys on the team better? Do you help them get to their personal goals? Okay, how do you get the leaders of the team? Like, Ryan Poles told the story. There was a tornado warning, mm -hmm. and he said, I walk in, and there's Peanut Tillman, Olin Krutz, Lance Briggs, and Brian Erlacher. Okay, those types of dudes that are on this team, Justin, David Montgomery, and Roquan, how do you get them to buy in so, hey, man, uh, here's what I need. I need you on my side. What do you have to do? Listen, most football players, they love practice anyway. The guys who love football, they love practice. They love running to the ball like Adam coached up at Carmel Catholic with my podcast partner, Jason McKee. But the football players, the team who love it, they don't mind, right? They don't mind running to the ball. They don't mind running down the field on kickoff. So guys like Roquan Smith and these guys, they're going to fly around anyway, right? They love being at practice. We saw Quinn this year. He flew around every game. I mean, a guy like Ira Flues must love watching Quinn's film. Khalil Mack, that guy is always hustling. We heard that about him at practice. So the football players will buy in. They, they will. It's just you have to be there every day preaching the exact same thing all the time and helping them win football games. Yeah. And one thing I liked, you know, going back to the general manager side of this too, is just having conversations with Ryan Poles actually after the press conference today. One of the things he brought up that I really liked was in Kansas City, if you wrote a scouting report that said a guy doesn't drop the football, mm -hmm. and then they would go to their meetings, right? So the scouting reports are all done. They go to their meetings, and as a staff, they watch the tape on the guy. And all of a sudden, he's dropping footballs on the film. Mm -hmm. You would get called out for that. You say, oh, that's not what we're seeing right now on film. And then, but in a respectful way, you'd be called out. You would be challenged about it, and then they would come to consensus as a group. And I just, you know, I had somebody tell me recently that I don't know that there was enough of that going on at House Hall the last, you know, four, five, six years. So do we call that accountability, whether it's me saying to my starting center, dude, come on, man, what are we doing here? Or my scout, you told me this, that I'm not seeing that. Well, and, and I hate to bring everything back to Mitch Trubisky, but don't you think there would have been some of that had, they, had the whole process been a little bit more transparent that they had really, now I know Ryan Pace said that there was all this conviction throughout the building, but like when you don't even involve the head coach in the thing, like that's what I'd like to hear though, if Ryan Poles is coming from a place where there is that accountability, it sounds like, 
But he kind of offered that up on his own. It didn't sound like, you know, some type of cliche thing that came up. So we'll see. Yeah, he's, he's had great mentors, right? Yeah. Pioli, uh, Veach, Ballard, and uh, Chris Ballard, just uh, knowing him a little bit, that is the kind of guy he is. He's going to tell you things that maybe you don't want to hear, right? But that's where Ryan Poles has to be the leader of that side of the building, right? Because big questions about the Bears' upper management. And Ryan Poles has to show them and create the atmosphere and the environment for winning football team. Because they haven't had one, right? They haven't won a playoff game since George McCaskey became chairman of the Chicago Bears. And they've only won or been a three or four since Ted Phillips became president of the Chicago Bears. So Ryan Poles is the only executive there who knows what winning looks like. And the kind of culture you're talking about is what they need. But does he get everybody to buy in? Because like you're saying, I don't know if it was there before. So can these guys buy into what Poe's trying to say and say, look, when I challenge somebody, it's not bad, it's actually good. And people have to respond to being challenged and told, like, it, like if you Cap told me, like, Olin, like, you, you were really bad in that segment. And I was like, thank you, man. I, I got to work. I got to get better. So let me ask you about the question was asked, and I told Ryan Pace this when I interviewed him multiple times. Your biggest mistake, Ryan, when you took over, that roster was terrible. And they asked you, how quick a turn? Oh, we're going to compete next year. And mm -hmm. Fox is like, I was in the Super Bowl my second year in Carolina. We're, we're ready to go. And that team was horrible. Mm -hmm. They asked those guys today, oh, no, this is not a rebuild. We're ready to get going here. Do you agree? If that, with that defense right in that front four, and I don't know who's coming back and who they're keeping, I have to hear what they think about their roster. But if Khalil Mack is healthy, if Quinn is healthy, if Eddie Goldman goes back to a $10 million a year nose guard, I don't know what they're going to do with Akeem Hicks. Akeem Hicks is a dominant defensive tackle. If they can get him back, Roquan Smith, Eddie Jack, they, they have Jalen Johnson. They have a defense that can win football games, man. And, and if they can get fields playing and that offense scoring anything more than 20 points a game and get takeaways, yes, they, they could win and compete, especially in the NFC, especially if, I don't know, where Aaron Rodgers ends up and Tom Brady retires, if he does. Who's left? Right, so they could. Uh, uh, Sean Payton and Drew Brees are gone out of New Orleans. So who's left now in the NFC where you can't compete, where you would say the Bears maybe are, are two, three, four, five years away? And what we're seeing in Green Bay right now, a bunch of coaches jumping ship. I, I, who knows what happens with Aaron Rodgers, but if he does leave, the Lions have the most stability in the division. That's that, amazing. That, that's amazing to think about. That shows you that there is a door open to take the North, as Ryan Pohl said today. And, and one thing I'll just say, you know, you talk about the defense. Offensively, if we're going to spend so much time like we have the last couple of years criticizing the scheme, mm -hmm. that's because we think that they've had some players that they could have gotten more out of. So... I think they obviously need to upgrade in some areas. I think they got to st stabilize that offensive line. I think they got to get some dudes at skill positions. But the point there being, a better coach could come in with a better scheme and get better results there right away.